good morning. What's happening? Why are you all huddled up here? Ma'am, there's a bee in the room. It's going to sting us. You shouldn't be afraid of this tiny little angel. Everyone back to your seats while I help it out. But ma'am, how come you aren't afraid of this bee? How can you call it an angel? Okay, let me see. Have you all had breakfast? Yes, yes, yes ma'am. So, can anyone tell me where you think our food comes from? Mama's kitchen. Order online. Sabzi mandi. Ma'am, does a bee have anything to do with our food? You're beginning to think in the right direction. That's one correct answer, but there's more to it. So when the bee picks up nectar and pollen bits to eat, it also carries these pollens from one flower to another. Once the pollen settles on the flower with the bee's help, it connects with the ovary. Now the magic begins. As the two fertilize, the ovary turns juicier and bigger, slowly transforming it into a fruit. The process of pollination is so specialized that there are hundreds of different types of pollinators. Not just honeybees, but wasps, birds, bats, squirrels, all of them are pollinators. Over millions of years, both pollinators and flowers have co-evolved to make pollination happen. Some flowers have developed colors, markings and shapes, while certain pollinators have developed characteristics such as long tongues or beaks, like the sunbird. Oh, look at your long beak. What are you trying to do? Are you also sipping nectar? Yes, I am. I love the sweet nectar in these flowers and I can't get enough. <laughs> and you have pollen all over your neck. Well, I'll be taking this pollen with me to more flowers and the farms as well. The farms? Mm-hmm. To eat the grasshoppers and some worms. Can I come with you? You know what? Let's request the wind to carry you to the farm with the pollens today. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, what's happening? Give me a fright. Where did you come from? The wind brought me here. Wow, you eat corn too? I love corn. I come here often to eat it and carry some of it with me. You have some bits of yellow on your face. That's pollen. Must have come from the last flower I picked to eat. I always thought you were stealing the flowers from our garden. But you're actually carrying the seeds of fruits. Insects, birds and the wind are not the only pollinators. There are mammals too, like this squirrel. Squirrels not only pollinate flowers, but also carry and disperse seeds from place to place. It's called forest farming, little Tara. Are you the only one who does this kind of forest farming? Oh no, of course not. There's a whole bunch of us mammals who do such services for ecosystems. Come, I'll introduce you to another friend of mine. Bats are amazing creatures of the night. They have been in the news for zoonotic diseases, but they have been around for millions of years. They are responsible not only for pollinating fruits like bananas, but also for creating new forests. Go on, talk to him. Mm, I'm scared. There's no need to be scared, child. My family and I are the ones responsible for the maintenance of this forest. Oh, what does that mean, sir? Come sit next to me and I will tell you. We eat a lot of fruit while traveling far and wide, dropping your seeds many a time through a hoop. Lo and behold, these seeds sprout where they fall, creating a whole new forest. Wow! We even eat up millions of mosquitoes who spread diseases like malaria and dengue. Many of the food grain crops you harvest are saved from being eaten by rodents like rats as we eat them up too. That's amazing! We play an important part in the web of life just like all the other friends you've made today. And today, you played an important part in the web of life too. I did? Absolutely. Come on, it's time for both of us to wake up now. Wake up? Everybody helped to make our food today. Mangoes from the squirrels and bats, lemons from the bees and sunbirds, and corn from the wind and squirrel. Everything is connected and everybody plays a role in bringing food to us. <laughs>